Hey, I'm Vaughn, and I'm a guitar addict. Actually, I've been playing the guitar for about 40 years. I started when I was 12. And um, the funny thing is, you would think 40 years, my gosh, this guy must be a master. But the truth of the matter is, I'm barely more than a beginner. I've spent a lot of time teaching myself songs and licks and riffs, and even one position of pentatonic minor and one position of the major scale. However, I never really spent a lot of time getting down to the basics and learning, a, building a foundation. And so here I am 40 years in and I'm going to start that. And this is an opportunity for you to go on this journey with me because I'm going to share tips along the way of what I'm doing and how I'm improving and what I'm using to improve. And you guys, can give me feedback too and stay in the loop with this and show me what you're doing on your journey to get better at the guitar. I've spent tons of time, uh, as a matter of fact, years practicing wrong. And I've got a little funny something to show you here before we step into what this all says. Um, I'm actually better at planning how to practice guitar than I am at practicing guitar. I can spend hours creating charts and exams and different fingering positions and chords that I need to know and songs and how much time to practice on each of those things and breaking it down to tenths of seconds. And yet here I am, a 40 year beginner. <laughs> so today I'm gonna to try something different. Uh, today is February 3rd, 2020. And um, that's when I'm starting my journey to become a proficient guitar player. And the first step, something that I've known for decades now, uh, one of the most important things for a person to understand and have a firm grasp of to build their foundation is an understanding of the fretboard. So knowing everywhere on the fretboard where you are at any time knowing all of the notes on the fretboard and knowing depending on the scale or mode that you're working on or the key with the chords knowing exactly where to play what so here we go my goal is to play the pentatonic minor in every key in every position so i've got three steps to accomplish to do this and weekly i'm going to post videos basically talking about where I am with those three steps and also the kinds of things that I ran into, any pitfalls and obstacles and what I did to work around them, but also things that I found that were really good or enhanced what I was doing. So let's look. Uh, step one, memorize all five shapes. I already mentioned that I know the, uh, the first position and I think most all of us, beginner to advance obviously, uh, know that first position. And this is it in the key of A minor, pentatonic minor. So it's just starting with the root, that A, right on the top string, the low E string. And you just go. Right? That's the box that everybody learns. It's the first uh, box that you learn when you're playing. Basically, I've been stuck in that box. Now I want to get out of it. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to learn the other four shapes. And I call it four shapes, really. The truth of the matter is, so there's 12 frets in an octave, right? And so there's really 12 positions that we could play um, the pentatonic minor up and down the fretboard here. And then it would repeat, obviously, in the second part of the fretboard. But I don't really count that because you don't have to know every single position, every fret along the guitar. Instead, what you need to know is you need to know like the boxes that are right beside each other. And that's easily broken down by looking at the scale degree. The pentatonic minor has five degrees in it. It's got the first, which is the root, the flatted third, the fourth, the fifth, and the flatted seventh. So you can start a uh, shape at each one of those things. So if we were starting with shape one, like I said, we've got right here, right? But then there's a shape two, and shape two comes in, and it's like right there, because you're going to go from that flat at third to the fourth. And then uh, shape three would be here, and so on. And that's the thing. So you'll 
as you follow me on this journey, you'll see because you know in the next video I'm going to show you each of these shapes and what I'm doing to uh, memorize them. So I want to complete step one before I move on to step two, and that's because I want to know each of those shapes. Also, in order to feel like I really know those, I've set myself a goal of being able to play one eighth notes at 100 BPM. Now I can already do that with that shape one. So. So I don't have to worry about shape one. As a matter of fact, we can just go ahead and check that one off. Because <laughs> that one's done. <laughs> it's been done for about 32 years. <laughs> All right. So, but I kind of <laughs> know a little bit shape two, but I don't know it anywhere near enough to play it at uh, 200 beats per minute on a quarter note. All right. so. I will complete each of these uh, shapes over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it takes me to do to memorize them to the point where I can easily play any of the shapes at that pace. Then I'm going to move on to step two. Step two is to memorize the scale degree and note names in all of the keys. That's the magic, right? Because I feel like at this stage we'll already, if, after we complete this, we will have a functional control of the fretboard. Um, but when I say scale degree, I'm talking about, you know, those numbers that we talked about, right? So when you play it, you would just say like one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, octave, one again. Um, and so I would say the scale degree while I'm playing those boxes. So I'm still staying in the box here, but now I know all five boxes. And each one that I'm practicing down and up, I'm going to say the scale degree while I'm doing it. And then I'm going to alternate to saying the note name. You should be able to play the minor pentatonic in any position. So if somebody says, play the minor pentatonic in C, well, if you know position one, you can just do it, right? But can you do it in, say, position three? Can you do it in position four? I can't. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm going to work on. And then uh, step three, this is where, so I feel like we will have already accomplished the majority of our goal already in step two, but step three is going to be the key to bringing it all together in a way that just is going to blow me and you guys away. That is to know the pentatonic minor scale vertically. You probably already know this, but I'm going to say it just for the sake of those who uh, aren't familiar with this. But when we say horizontally, we're talking about what I've been doing here, playing up and down the strings in one little area. I'm focused horizontally. So if I play in this box here, I'm horizontal. If I play in this box here, I'm horizontal. If I want to play vertical, I have to actually move outside of the box. And the way that you do that initially, right, is knowing the other box positions so that you can move from this box to this box to this box to this box. So the first exercise that you do or that I will do in step three is I will go down on position one and then I will move over to the next position and I will go up in position two. I'll move over to the next one. I will go down in three, up in four, down in five. And then I'm gonna go up in five, down in four, up in three, and so on and so forth, back and forth, until I've really got a good understanding of how these all match together, where the notes are in the pentatonic minor up and down the fretboard. Once I've done that, then I'm going to work on doing just the bottom two strings and just doing scales. That was not pentatonic minor, but that's an example of what I'll be doing vertically. And I would just do those bottom two strings until I understand them completely and can play that in any key. Then I go to the middle two strings and it'll be the same thing. And all the way up and down, I don't know what I just played there. And then I'm going to eventually get to the top two strings. Now you can see this is actually a pretty long process. This may take me, I'm going to throw a guess out there, okay? Hold me to this. I think I will accomplish all three of these things at a level that I think is acceptable in four months. 
I think that by practicing daily and doing this, I can do it in four months. I may knock my socks off and surprise myself with finishing it in half that time, or it may take twice that time. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. But my guess is four months, so we're in February, so March, April, May, June, June. Look at June 2nd and see if I haven't accomplished all of these. And then basically what that boils down to at that stage, we will literally be able to move up and down the fretboard without like any hiccups. Just being able to just glide right down it. But this is the part one of my uh, journey. And I'd love for you to come along with me. Let's uh, do this together. So if you don't mind, comment down below and let me know where you are in your journey. And also let me know if you're basically accepting this challenge because that's what this is, right? This is a challenge to complete all of these steps in a set amount of time. If you're accepting the challenge and doing it along with me, that would be awesome because I'd love to see how you progress and then we can sort of bounce off of each other and uh, also keep each other uh, honest, you know, working on this, practicing daily. So definitely chime in on the comments below. And uh, if you're enjoying this and if you're looking forward to seeing future ones, obviously like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week and I'll let you know what my progress is. Thanks for following.